Hello, my name is Vortex Warp, and welcome back to another Minecraft Redstone video. And today we are doing part two of my Redstone Bank system. So in the first episode, we built up this over here, and if you want to check that episode out, there'll be a link to the playlist with all of the videos in this kind of series in the top right of your screen now. Um, but I'm just going to explain to you briefly what we did last episode and what we've done since then, and then we're going to move on to building the next part of the system. So last episode we built this pin system over here um, and you enter a four digit pin and then it will select a slice. So over here we've got four slices which represent four different codes um, and depending what your pin code is it will select a different slice. Then we built up this which is a map art seven segment display. So in the map in the bottom left of the screen you can see in red is the number seven displayed and if we then change this number to a different number we can select for example the number four and display that one instead. And the system will shift all of the segments around and on the map in the bottom left, you can see in red, it's displayed the number four. In another video, we then worked on this, um, which is a contraction inspired by the Redstone subreddit, which is a simpler map art seven segment display that uses water uh, to make the segments. And in the bottom left, you can see we've got the numbers nine displayed. The final thing which we have built since part one is this over here. And this is a decimal counter um, that counts using signal strength up and up. And this will be used to store the balances of the players. Once again, the link to the playlist with all of these individual videos is in the top right of your screen. So before I move on and do some actual redstone, I thought I'd just show you how I want this system to work using this little mock-up over here. So as you can see, we've got our control panel. You'd enter your four digit pin in. Um, and then what would happen is over here on this map, you'd get uh, a bunch of numbers displayed, which would be your balance. Um, and obviously the map would be decorated um, to represent um, all the different things. So it would be like, this is your balance, this is your account, and it would tell you whether you were logged in or not. Um, and it may even record the number, I'm not sure yet, but it will display the balance using this system here. So if, for example, with our map art seven segment display, we'll have like four or five of these in a row displaying the balances. Then what we'll have is we'll have a shulker box in the center. Um, and in this shulker box, we have this over here and this over here. The idea is if we want to withdraw diamonds from the system, we take our mock-up items, which are our buttons here, and we move them to this side of the shulker box. So if we wanted to draw out five diamonds, we'd move them into there. And then we'd press this button here. This shulker box would be destroyed. And, these, uh, and this would be sent off and it would subtract five diamonds from our total and then it would dispense the five diamonds out to us. In a similar fashion, if we wanted to deposit an amount of diamonds, we'd simply just put them once again in this left side of the shulker box and press the green button like so. Then once we're done, we'd log out using this red button, the number would change back to zeros over here, and the system would be ready for the next person to enter in their pin and log into the system. In order to store the balances of the players, we have these counters here, which we built up previously. And I've added a couple of circuits to this. So for example, we've here got this green circuit, which is simply redirecting the signal strengths around the corner um, so that we can have a bunch of these modules powering to the same green line. And then these green lines will be going over to the seven segment displays. And then the seven segment displays um, will display the number depending on the signal strength. This other part of the green circuit down here actually travels up and locks all of the comparators, which are in here and they're quite hard to see, but these comparators here are locked by this. What we can actually do is then turn off which um, ones are active. So for example, we can turn off this one or turn it back on. And this will toggle which module we are reading from the balance. Finally, we have this yellow circuit over here and this yellow circuit will switch off or on depending if the balance is um, zero. If the balance is zero, we do not want to withdraw any more diamonds because that means that the balance is zero and there are no diamonds in the account. So if someone requests to draw more, withdraw more diamonds than they have in their account, we need to lock the system and prevent any more diamonds from being dispensed. Hopefully that all makes sense. And now we're going to move on to creating some new segments. So the next step is to actually create the sugar box unloaders. And I've taken a design here from YouTube, which will be in my useful videos playlist which will again be in the top right of your screen. It's going to be a lot of videos in the top right of your screen. Um, and that's simply because we're using a lot of components together in this video, because this is sort of bringing all of my previous videos together into one big thing. 
So yeah, this is just a simple shulker box unloader. Just as an example, I'm gonna put eight concrete in this shulker box here. We can simply put it in here. And as you can see, it will unload the shulker box. Our shulker box ends up in this dropper over here and our items will actually end up um, in this here, in this sorter. The reason I've added a sorter is because we want to sort out the difference between diamonds, the dummy items, and we also want to be able to detect um, at what stage um, we've reached this half of the system. So what we actually kind of want to do is be able to detect once we've withdrawn out all our items. So what we're actually going to end up doing is taking this shulker box like this, um, we're going to send it across to the module, then on its way, we're actually going to put another dummy item inside, like so, there. Then what we'll do is we will withdraw all of these items. So we will take out the 64 diamonds and add 64 to that account. We'll take out the 64 stone buttons and minus 64 from the account. And then we we'll detect the lime concrete and we'll know that this shulker box is emptied. And then what will happen is the shulker box will be broken and sent back to the system to go back into here because we know that the left side is empty and we don't want to count any of the buttons on the right side of the shulker box. Of course, we don't want the system to break um, when we have um, diamonds and stone buttons in the system like mixed up like this. So if we have them like alternating, the system could break if we're not careful because it might try and add a diamond and subtract a diamond at the same time from the account balance and we really don't want that to happen so we are going to have to be very careful with our wiring something else that i've considered is that we are in fact going to need one of these sorters at each module because if we have one global one if someone deposited like this whole side full of diamonds and then left um the next person would come along and they'd enter their code and the diamonds would be being unloaded into their account because the old person has logged out before their diamonds have been counted whereas if we send the whole shulker box to the account, then the diamonds can be counted whilst someone else is using the system and it doesn't interfere. So that means we're gonna need a sorter at each module, which is a bit of a pain, but I think it's gonna be worth it because otherwise there'd be a lot of waiting around if lots of users wanted to use the system. So now I'm gonna crack on, figure out the sorter modules and add them to the edges of the um, current modules and then I'll get back to you. And a few hours later, we actually have a working design. So the design is behind me here. And as you can see, um, it doesn't look very much different from when you last saw it. But I've added on, of course, this module over here, which is the shulker box unloader. Um, I've added in some sorters here. And I actually had to specifically design these for the use case, just because of the space constraints that we had. And I didn't want to accidentally bud power these droppers over here. And that was occurring fairly frequently. We also have the green circuits, um, which I've rearranged here to lock these. So when I power this, it will lock these here. And I've actually split the signal up into two different segments here. Um, and the reason for this is because um, even if this module is locked, we still want to be able to read the output to determine when the module hasn't got any items left in um, so that we know not to take any items out of the module um, or subtract from the module when the score is zero so that the user can't like have negative items in their account and they can't withdraw when their balance is zero. Um, over here, all of these lead down into the same line. So I've done some funky wiring here to avoid bud powering all these droppers. But effectively, um, all four of the outputs from these um, actually power into the same line here just in a weird way by going up and over and down beneath. So that if all of these read zero, then our output over here should be on and it will lock this uh, over here and we will not get any subtraction from the system. But of course we can still get addition if people are inserting diamonds into the system, which is done through the item sorters over here. So this simply redirects and powers up into the module. This yellow circuit over here is a global clock which will be running. So off of this, we're gonna base the modules because we've got to unlock the items every now and then for uh, emptying them out. And this will power to all of the different modules which are storing the values in. This will also go to our displays over there so that they update every now and then, but they don't update every time um, because otherwise we're going to get like double pulsing through the, the dispensers and we don't want that with those. So let's talk about this sorter. Um, the way I did it is it's just a regular sorter but wired strangely. So um, 
we simply send the signal through these over here through these pistons and below and the way this is being powered is it's being bud powered by this um, note block and it's being updated by this note block being bud powered by this uh, redstone over here and that's powering so just to give you an example we can chuck uh, a slime block on here and it'll be picked up and will remain the right amount in there and of course the one next to it doesn't interfere with it either so i've got that positioned over here and then we're redirecting the items around to detect any item that isn't a diamond over here one other important thing to note is that i've actually shifted the display of the shulker box round so we got our line going through the middle here and that way we can draw items out of the shulker box because we draw them out left to right and not up and down so i kind of had the line vertical before if you remember um and that wouldn't actually work so we can move the buttons up to the top here and we can also insert diamonds in the top and instead of inserting a dummy item in we're just going to detect when the first glass pane is withdrawn so any shulker boxes which come out of the system will actually be missing their first glass pane so we need another system to replace that glass pane um for the user so we can send the shulker box back and also we want to replace all of these buttons and once that's done we can send the shulker box back to the main display unit the interface um, for the user to use in the next batch so anyway i'm sure you want to see an action so we're going to grab some diamonds and we're going to add three to the account like this so it's currently reading 60 or well it's technically currently reading 9560 but if we just pay attention to the 60 we should be good and i'm going to chuck it into this hopper line over here and as you will see it should go up so 61 62 and 63 just like that we can also subtract items so let's say we wanted to subtract two items from the system we'd simply move two items up to the top there and then we'd insert the shulker box in and we'll actually subtract two so it'll go down to 61 so it will start subtracting as you see and it stops at 61. we can also insert both buttons and diamonds into the system so let's minus two and add one like so so it should minus two which will get it down to uh 59 and then add one which will get it back up to 60. so let's give this a try so i'll throw the shulker box in and you should see it goes down to 59 and then it goes back up to 60. so 60 down to 59 and then briefly back up to 60 over there so this is timed perfectly so there's just the right amount of time for the system to update so now it reads 60 and as you can see you can't cheat the system by putting in alternating diamonds and stone buttons and it also works the other way if you put diamonds first and then stone buttons so that's really great but now we've got to actually replicate this a bunch of time and i've got to figure out what the best way of putting these modules together is i think for my basic demonstration i'm going to build four of these modules up i may build more afterwards but we've got four combinations over in our combination thing already so what I'm going to do now is figure out how to tile all of these modules together in a nice modular way. Um, and then once I've done that, I can start hooking up all of the other redstone to it and doing all of the fancy stuff that links all of the stuff together. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a beautiful sight. We've got four of these modules hooked up together with this blue line in the center. And they all output into these four lines over here, which will go to the seven segment displays. Of course, I could hook up more than this. But for the demonstration, I'm going to hook up four. And once we get it working, I'll see if I can hook up more after that. Um, I've actually also rearranged some of this green redstone here. And that's the redstone that just detects when there's zero items in a account and, mean, and says that you can't withdraw any more from that. Um, and that's just because I realized it wasn't working. And since I had space here, I decided to make it uh, slightly different. These brown blocks control which module is active. So for example, we can select this one over here and then the module will read 2220 or we can select this one over here and it will read 9000 and we can do this for all four of our modules the brown blocks will have lines going over here to the button panel um, and when you select an account it will choose which of these is active and it will also choose which of these hoppers is unlocked so that we actually get the shulker box going into that module my next steps are going to be to redirect the yellow lines so that they all power to the same clock and I'm probably going to do that um, by going under here like so um, and then I'm going to have to hook up this to that and that's going to be a lot of work so I'll cut back to you once I've made some progress. I feel like I'm just about at the stage where I need to move this over here and that over there into a similar location so I can start hooking up the lines. 
I've added this black circuit over here, which is where the shulker box will travel. Um, and I've added this circuitry over here. I've tried to keep it within this footprint. Um, and I've done a pretty good job of that, I think. Um, so the yellow lines come round here and power through all the way. And that would continue on um, if there are more modules. And then the brown lines come from this block and this block over here up through this tower here and across into this hopper here um, and it will lock all of them except the one which is selected so that works fairly well I've added a water stream around here to deliver the shulker boxes and of course here any shulker box which makes it through here um, should be delivered back to the player because it means they've sent a shulker box when they haven't got an account selected so that will be part of the uh, interface so now I've got to, as I said before, hook up these brown circuits to the uh, interface over there. Um, but before I do that, I actually need to make some modifications to the interface itself. So at the moment, when you select a combination, it just sends the signal through the correct slice up here. And what we actually want to do is add um, some RS NOR latches um, so that it will permanently stay selected until another module is selected or it will permanently stay selected until uh, the logout button which is the red button is pressed so i'm going to install those rs null latches now i'm going to move over um, my circuitry over there to here and then we should be able to start hooking them up together so let's paste it in and bam so there we go Got that over there, I've got this over here. I'm gonna have them a little bit of a way away um, just so that I can do the lines, but I've got these four lines here. Um, and this is actually by Mizuma Games once again, so I'll leave a link to his uh, video uh, down in the description. Um, and I've just gotta hook up these four lines over here to these four lines over here, so that should be fairly easy. And it doesn't really matter which is which, does it? So let's do that now. And so it's all starting to come together. We've got our lines going towards our modules and we've installed our clock over here. Um, at the moment, I haven't got a good way to toggle this clock. I'm wondering if I can think of a good way. Although the redstone dust is only blinking briefly, so it's only turning off for a short amount of time. But it is all about the block updates. However, if we light this up, it shouldn't be that much of an issue because that's what causes the lag, the light updates. Um, Though I'm not really experiencing much at the moment, and it's only going to be this single line. Um, I've got all the lines coming to the modules, so we can toggle which module is active. Um, and at the moment, as you can see, we've got 11 stored in the active module. I've changed the output to this side so that we can map it easily to our 7 segment display without it interfering with the redstone over there. So the next step is to build up 4 of these 7 segment displays and find out a good way to hook them up to this uh, module. This was bound to happen sooner or later, but I've encountered an issue that means I'm going to have to move everything around. So I've built up my four seven segment displays, as you can see over there, and you can see the number displayed in the bottom left of the map. But actually, when we're over here, since I built it really far away from my seven segment displays, it doesn't actually update the furthest ones. So I've actually got the system working. If we just ignore the two to the right, um, working with a two digit number here, so this currently displays like the equivalent of two, but the others don't update. So yeah, what I'm gonna have to do is effectively move all of this redstone around. And although the system currently works, um, we've got to move it so it's closer to this. And I'm also gonna try and set center the seven segment display on a map so that it looks really nice and do some map decoration and stuff. And then I think I'll get back to you because this, this is looking a bit higgledy piggledy with stuff everywhere and I think it would be nice if we can sort of get all of the components on similar levels and we can sort of compact it together a bit and make it look a lot better. Sometimes things just work out perfectly. As you can see I've built the map here um, and I've decided only to put it in the top half because I do plan on building this on an SMP at some point and I wouldn't want to use up a whole map area since the actual bank needs to be relatively close to this zone. So I think once I build it in like the S&P, I would actually like put this in a big hole in the ground with like a border around it or a castle around it. So you'd only see this if you flew up in the sky. Um, so that's why I've only decided to do the top. But I've done the top. I've got some nice little diamond pixel arts there that display on the map. And the thing that worked out perfectly 
is that I've actually been able to use these slabs to hide um, the dispensers. And this means that I can use black as the background rather than grey. My plan from the start was to use a black background. And I plan on doing that because the water or the colour would stand out from that. But I realised that that wouldn't work because you'd be able to see the dispensers. As you can see on the map there, the second O actually has a dot in the middle of it. Um, and to hide this, um, I actually can use these slabs, which are waterloggable. And these are the new slabs which came out in the latest snapshot, which at the time of recording came out about two days ago. So before that, it wouldn't have been possible to make the background black because these are the only black slabs that you can get. And that perfectly hides the dispenser there. And that works really nicely and it means we can have a black background rather than just a grey one. So now I'm actually going to build up the rest of the bank system and try and compact it into this zone a little more. So I'm going to copy all the segments from over here, try and position them nicely in a nice way so that they fit within this zone and then I'll come back to you. And I believe that that is the stage that we are at now. So behind me you can see a bunch of redstone. So I've actually just copied over, you can see... The different segments so I've got the interface here and I've added some collecting lines going down into the modules and then I've got the seven segment display over here and this blue line connects between the modules and the seven segment display and it works a treat so I've also left room for you to expand it this way so I decided I put this this way around so if you wanted more than four modules which is probably what I'm going to end up building when I build this in survival you'd want to expand it in this direction so that leaves plenty of room to expand this and then these lines can just fork out in all directions and go into the side of them. So I think it's time for a demonstration. So you can see I've set up the little mock interface here and I've also hooked up this red button to log out of the account. So we're currently logged into one of the accounts. So if we press the red button, it will log us out and we'll wait a few couple of seconds and these uh, numbers up here will turn to zeros because we'll be logged out of the account. And as you can see, they just switch over to zeros like that. Then what we can do is enter one of our pins. So I've set this system up with three pins. So let's start by entering the pin 3971. So 3, 9, 7, and 1, like so. And then we're just going to wait for the system to process using this handy indicator light here. I may at some point actually put this indicator light onto the map display. It just depends how quickly it can update because obviously you want the feedback to be fairly instant with the indicator light. And I guess you can also hear the system processing. So at the moment it's deciding which combination to select and once it's done that it will activate one of these lines so you can see that line over there activated and you should see the map will update fairly shortly with the balance so as you can see yep 925 which is the balance stored in that account so if i wanted to add eight diamonds for example to that account we can grab this shulker box and put it in this water stream and if we just wait a couple of seconds you'll see that it will actually go around the water stream and it will end up in one of the modules so as you can see, it ends up in that last module there because that's the one we have selected. Or maybe it was that one, I can't remember. But it will start adding to that account and we should see the map will start beginning to update. So if we just look down at the map, yep, it starts to update. So we're getting the numbers there and you can also see just in my screen there in big. And you can see it's going to stop on the correct number, which should be the balance before add eight. So yep, that's 933. Then what we can do is we can log out of the account or we can simply enter another account number if you desire to. So let's do that now. So I'm going to enter in the code 1342. And we just have to wait for the system to process. So you can see over here it's about to begin processing. And it's begun. And the lamp will light up. And once we're logged into our account, we should see this number over here change to the balance of this new account. So before we are viewing it for another account, and we're going to now be viewing it for this account over here with the pin code 1342. So the system should be almost done processing and you should see now this line updates, which will mean a different module is active. And we should see over here, the water begins to update, which will update on the map. And as you can see, yep. So this account has a balance of 9,074 diamonds. Obviously these are all just mock figures that I entered into the system. And this time I'll show us subtracting five so we should end up with 9,069. So let's subtract five from the system and you'll see that it actually goes into a different module this time. So it went into that module over there because that's the active module that we're reading and writing to. So if we just wait for the system to respond, we should see this number update and it will begin to decrease. And there we go. So it's now decreasing. 
9070. And then this will update 9069. So as you can see, that works a treat. And let's log into the final account. So I'll just show you once again, we can actually log out before we enter the pin code if we desire. And then we can enter in a new pin code. So let's enter in 9999. And there we go, we've logged in. So you can see the balance of this account is 14 diamonds. And just as an example, I think I'm gonna show off the feature where you can't subtract more than you have in the account. So let's say we try to subtract 18 from our 14 and withdraw that amount. Let's shove that in and we can watch the system. So it will go into the module. So which module is it gonna go into? I think it's gonna go into this module over here. Yep, I was right. So it'll go into that module and it'll begin to process. And we should see that it actually stops at 000, and it doesn't roll over to 9,999. Um, so let's just give that a look and prove that this works. We're at zero, and we should see that it stops decreasing, and it won't go further than zero, which is wonderful. So as you can see, this account balance is now zero, and you cannot withdraw any diamonds from the account. So I think that's going to be it for today's episode, but I'm going to briefly go over what we have uh, to finish before this system is actually done. Of course, at the moment, we're not actually getting any diamonds back from our system. So I'm going to need to hook up a diamond reservoir that we can send diamonds into and withdraw diamonds from. Um, that all the players can insert diamonds and withdraw from, um, which obviously will depend on their account balance. Um, and to do that, I'm going to need to take all the items out of the chests, which are at the bottom of each module. Okay, well that one, yeah, it's full of shulkers and it's going to be full of redstone glass and buttons and diamonds. And we're going to need to send them in a water stream. We're going to have to sort out all of those items. Um, and then we're going to have to repackage the shulkers um, into their correct form and send them back to the interface. We also need to get the interface itself working. So at the moment, I've only got this red button working. So we need it to be able to receive a shulker box and dispense it down here. Then the user can put the items how they want. And when they press this green button, it will break the shulker box and it will send it off into this line because we've just been putting it in manually for now. And once it's in this line, it will go into the correct module. It will modify the account and then it will come out the bottom. So then we've just got to send it over to the modules. So those are the two main things we've got to do. Um, Obviously, we have to deal with what if a shulker box doesn't get picked up. We need to send uh, the shulker box back to the player um, so that they can take their diamonds because obviously they put their diamonds into the account, into the system when they weren't logged into their account. And we don't want this system to eat their diamonds. And we also want to have any items here um, that are in here actually be sent back to the player so that aren't buttons, diamonds, or glass panes, or shulker boxes because if they accidentally put an item in this shulker box um, and then send it off to the bank system thinking that they can deposit in there um, it's not going to work and we want them to be able to retrieve that items so that's the things to do but I think we've made some great progress today we've got our accounts working we can add to them we can subtract for them we can display them and we can enter our pins to choose which one we want to show so that's going to be it for today's episode if you've enjoyed remember to leave a like and comment down below and also subscribe if you loved it thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one goodbye